Welcome back to uh, Innovating Capella's series on reverse engineering with Capella. Uh, today we're going to shift from the physical architecture that we've been working on uh, to the system analysis of the smart car. And uh, with that, uh, we're going to go through these topics. We're going to talk about the system analysis process, uh, how it differs from the, from the physical architecture, uh, we're going to capture a subset of the car with system analysis. Uh, we're going to focus on the handheld remote and app rocker. Uh, we're going to define the capabilities of this uh, system uh, into that res with respect to the handheld remote and app rocker. Uh, that, that includes the actors, the environment, and the operator. Uh, we're going to define the functions of the system and, and of the actors. Uh, we're going to populate some exchange items. So we're actually going to show how some of the data items are populated for this. And then we'll ensure that the system delivers the capability of the remote and app rocker uh, by using the functional chains. Um, so for this activity, uh, we're basically going to be using, we're going to go from the physical architecture that we were working with and using the manual information there for how it was kind of constructed. Now we're going to shift to basically looking at some of the operating uh, instructions of the assembly manual. So we'll be looking at specifically uh, the remote section of it for the IR remote is what was used. And also we're going to be looking at the app to kind of develop the content for this. Now in, in this section, uh, we're going to focus, we're going to walk through the system analysis process and we'll make reference to it for each section as we're going through it. Uh, that includes the uh, system analysis the full system analysis piece. So we'll go through each of those sections and kind of talk about what we're doing at each section. Uh, one of the things I want to talk about first is why does this differ than the physical architecture? First of all, first of all it, keep, it focuses on the capabilities of the system. Uh, the actors interacting with the system, the operating the environment, and the functions of the systems and the actors. That's one main difference, a big shift now uh, to looking at it. Uh, the challenges of reverse engineering is uh, components all exist, so you have to minimize them when you're doing the system analysis model. And why would you want to do this, minimize it? Is that the system model may be the starting point to deliver new capabilities with completely new technology. So you don't want to introduce a lot of technology in the system analysis model. For example, you might want to replace the, the infrared remote with a Bluetooth capability for basically interacting it. Maybe it's a Bluetooth remote, maybe it's Bluetooth from your phone. So that's some ideas of what you might do as you're enhancing. So you want to keep the technology as much as possible out of it. Uh, other things, uh, we would, would might want to use this model to introduce new capabilities in the system. Uh, we want to minimize the manual creation of the realization links. That's another reason why we're doing this, is that we want to create these uh, relations between the different levels. And by doing this, is we're actually now going to create uh, the relationships between these different levels as we're going through the model, uh, as we're going, uh, as we want to do a logical architecture and a physical architecture, because we're going to have the system analysis model to start with. Um, the system model uh, also supports some diagrams that are unique. It has a capability diagram that you don't have in the physical architecture. And it also has a system architecture diagram which really is more of a black box view of the system. So that's a very nice feature to have because now you're kind of defining what's in the system and what's not in it. And it's a nice black box kind of representation of it. And so what we're going to do first is we're going to start by defining the capabilities of the system and we're going to gather that information. Uh, we're going to define the capabilities and from the process flow that's focusing on this red set of lines here. So we're going to define the actors and entities and we're going to capture that in a, a mission capabilities blank diagram. So uh, first we'll just go over and take a look at what that would look like. So what I did for this first capabilities diagram is I started with the information that was in the user manual on the smart car re uh, remote and I created this set of diagrams that go with it, or this diagram that goes with it. So I show that I have uh, an operator with a remote. I have set the automated modes with the remote. Uh, there's various automated modes that you have with this. And then I also have some parameter settings that's going on with the remote. And those were all kind of in that user manual. Uh, the next thing from that, then I was able to uh, also do the similar capabilities with the IR remote now, or in the uh, app controlled remote. This is the app and the functionality here we're focused on is this rocker part of the model that you see over here in the diagram. Uh, with this rocker capability, we're able to basically do this set of functionality over here uh, with the uh, operate with the remote and, and, and uh, do that and we also can set the various operating modes and all that thing. So we're going to be focused mainly, though, on this remote capability that we're seeing here. 
in, in that. So let's jump over and watch you take a look at the diagrams. Uh, this diagram here, I think, is a little wrong on that. So, but we're actually going to look at the model. So let's go look at those capability diagrams as we see them right now. So the first one we're going to open up is the handheld remote capability. As you can see here, I've created uh, a different uh, all the different views. So I started with the operate with a remote, and then I have forward, left, turn, uh, turn, right, turn left, turn right, backwards, stop. That's basically for the remote. I have the automated automated mode setting with also with that remote, and then I set the parameters with it. See, there's a different parameter setting. Uh, I also created a diagram for the app control. So this is the app control diagram here. It's a little different uh, because of the fact that uh, just, you know, I actually have some things in here about installing the app, uh, selecting the app, uh, you know, select the app model. There's actually functionality with the app that allows you to do programming in a DIY mode. So I have capabilities of that. Uh, then I have app control. Uh, there's a bunch of control functionality, and essentially the rocker remote is this one that we see right here. This is the rocker part of it. So with the rocker remote, I'm able to do the same functionality that I had uh, before with the IR remote. So that's the, what I'm going to focus on then for designing uh, for this uh, video. We're going to do those two things in the, the system analysis model. So, uh, so now going back to the next thing is let's go look at creating the system analysis architecture blank diagram and the process for that. The process for doing that is I'm going to uh, refine and allocate the system functions to the system actors, entities in the system. Um, and that looks like this part of the process here where I'm going to refine and allocate the functionality. Again, this kind of the purple flow here. Uh, and what that ends up resulting in is a diagram that looks like this. So we'll, I did that one of those for the remote. And I did one of those um, for the remote, and I also designed the data model for that. So I actually created the exchange items for it. And we'll get into a view of that for what the different exchange uh, uh, items look like. And uh, we again did that for the rocker, as you can see here. And we did the data for the rocker. So let's go take a look at that in the actual model. So we're going to go back to the, this view here. I'm going to open up the uh, SAB uh, for the manual functions. So opening it up for the manual functions, you'll see here the, the view of the content we have. We basically start with uh, the operator who interacts uh, with the, oh, this is the app one. So let's go back to the, I want to do the other one first. So we, we have the interact with the direction and stop buttons. So the operator is working with those. Um, they receive the manual button operations. Uh, they process the IR remote commands. Uh, that ends up in terms of driving the wheel and you know, the left wheels and the right wheels, if they are actually drive, driven separately. Uh, that provides the left wheel. Uh, that then goes to the environment. Uh, the environment provides the, the left wheel resistance and provides the right wheel with resistance. Now, it's, it's possible that the environment is slippery. So what I have here then is feedback coming back, which is actually, you see torque is being delivered to the wheel, and I have realized torque being fed back to the system, which is the actual car itself that causes the car to move. Uh, that results then into the car dynamics that are then basically comes back and are observed by the operator. So that, that's kind of the whole flow that's going through. Um, what I did is I created then uh, exchange items for each of these objects. So we'll open up an exchange item view. So we open up that for looking at with the exchange items. We'll partition them so we can see it a little better. So here's for the remote, here's the tactile button inputs. So basically the inputs here are pressed and unpressed, and I have them for all the different types of uh, forward, backwards. All the different buttons have those two states, pressed and un unpressed. Uh, then I have the button message being created right here, and a button message. And this is basically the message that has been delivered over the essentially kind of the IR link that we're having. But again, I kept it very high level uh, because this could something very similar could be done, let's say, with uh, Bluetooth technology. Uh, then that results in data that's uh, a power that's being delivered from uh, the IR remote command. We're basically going to want a power command that's going to drive the left and right wheels. So I have that then included here, which basically has a, 
a power command and I have it basically a default value and a minimum and maximum of power, uh, which is measured in wattage. And then that ends up driving torque. And I have basically a torque object here that's used on this functional flow. And then this was realized on the other functional flow is a realized torque here. Now those torque, those flows then are all connected and right, uh, basically are connected up to a component flow, which then is linked back up to essentially a physical object here. So you have the physical representation of that object. Now th that's kind of the, the basic flow through the system. You notice that I do say, because we're working with a kind of a real uh, environment, I am putting little notes in my design saying that this is the remote and the remote functions, and this is the uh, the car functions kind of going on here. So I have them kind of grouped together. Don't have to do that, but I find it helpful just to keep track of things. And it also will be helpful when I go and do the logical architecture and I now start creating boundaries around these various functions. Uh, likewise, I can open up the other model for the app control. I reused a lot of it. It's very similar. Uh, so I'll go looking at the app functionality. You'll see that I have instead here received the rocker input, and I actually have the little wrap, the app note noted up here. Um, it's it's a little bit different from the objects that are being used. So here the app the app itself uh, tactile input basically is I'm using the rocker instead. And so basically it's just the rocker state here going into it. And then basically you get the rocker state basically being uh, uh, this uh, being used on both sides. So here's the tactical input and the rocker state uh, are on those flows there. Now I'm using uh, for those flows, you can see that I've turned, I've set the setting up here to show the exchange items on the functional exchanges. So I'm actually seeing the exchange items to show that I've got them all populated. Uh, the back half of it is pretty much the same. Uh, inputs are here, power and moving the car are all the same, the same functionality. So that gives you uh, kind of a view of what I've been putting into the model. Uh, switching back to uh, some slides. Uh, I then have taken the last step basically is we want to make sure that you're delivering the full capability. So to do the delivering of the capabilities, we're going to use the functional chains to do that. Uh, this is the green part. So basically going to use functional chains to kind of show how the functionalities are be being delivered. Uh, so with that, now I just go to the object here and I define a functional chain that, that aligns with the, the capabilities that I had. So I do that for both the system analysis and for the, uh, the remote. And I do that also for the app. So here's the two functional chains. So now we're going to go over and take a look at that. Uh, I'll open up, a, here's the remote functional chain, and I can hide the data. So this shows the chain of functionality, and I have uh, IR remote control and deliver drive command. I actually did it as two functional chains. One is referencing the other. So if I open up this IR remote functional chain, you'll see here, here's the IR remote, and then it's basically using a functional chain for drive deliver drive command. Uh, the reason why I did that is that way I, I can do the same thing for the uh, functional chain for the app. So this, this chain of functionality is common uh, between the two of them. So I did that kind of uh, functional chain references. Um, other things that you can do now, once you have this done, you could use this to generate kind of an exchange scenario. Uh, now that I have these functional chains created between it, but these functional chains then tie back to the capabilities. So if I go back to my capability diagram here, and in this case, I have the one for the rocker remote, uh, you'll see if I look in the semantic browser that I've connected uh, that capability to its uh, functional chain. So there's the functional chain for app rocker remote. Uh, and I also have uh, functional chains for forward uh, drive that basically deliver the drive command uh, for each one of these here uh, for those because those are common functional chains for each one of those. So it shows that part of it. If I go to the other uh, capabilities diagram, uh, I do the similar capabilities for it. So I'll go over here to handheld remote capabilities and operate with remote. You'll see there's the functional chain for it. So now I have a complete connection between my capabilities and my functional chains. And I'm basically now ready to uh, even 
transition this to the logical where I could capture some more information. So again, the reason why we're doing this is that this now is capturing kind of a black box view. So if I go back to my slides, we, we basically are now creating kind of a black bat box view of the system. So I showed kind of the process uh, and how it differs. And the, one of the main reasons why it differs is now I'm coming up with a black spot box view and I'm using different information. I'm using the kind of the user's perspective to develop the content. Uh, I used it first to develop the capabilities and then I used it to define the functions and, and then populate the exchange items. So that's kind of uh, the approach here. Again, the goal of all this is to get to where I can basically go from top level to bottom with the system like this. I want to be able to get from the system analysis here now and get back and connect it back to that physical architecture. And I want to do this in the minimal amount of effort. And I don't want to be creating these realization links manually. I want to basically be created uh, from automatically for me. And that'll happen as I do the transitions down through the phases for this. So that's one of the reasons why I want to do this. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, please like the channel uh, for more. I will continue on this journey of uh, building out this model. Uh, I have shared this model. Uh, it is available on GitHub. Uh, so you actually can see the model as it's uh, being built. Uh, flash the screen up for that. It's up on GitHub. Uh, this is the, the path that you can find it. Uh, make sure you, down, you pull down the master uh, path of it. You can see there are there has been multiple uh, tags. There's a tag for lesson three. I'll create a tag for lesson four uh, as uh, I go through this, and you'll see the tag and it's on the uh, basically on the master branch. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, uh, please subscribe, and uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks.